Hello friends, welcome to another lecture of quantum mechanics. Today our topic is one dimensional linear harmonic oscillator. Okay. So before we start, please subscribe the channel, hit the thumbs up button. Also share with your friends, inspire me to create new content for you. Uh, and if you want to follow me on Insta, this is my Insta ID Oza Lukaji. Oza Lukaji. 123 this is the insta id so you can follow me on insta right so now let's start so in simple harmonic motion in simple harmonic motion you know the restoring force is proportional to the displacement that is f motion restoring force sorry restoring force is this is proportional to the displacement right so suppose we have a linear harmonic oscillator like this its mass is suppose m then so the spring constant is suppose k here and if it oscillates k this way then the restoring force acting on it is directly proportional to the displacement okay so as the restoring force acts in uh, the uh, opposite direction of the displacement that's why uh, we can write so there should be a constant if you replace the proportionality symbol so that's why uh, and uh, uh, as restoring force x in opposite direction of displacement that's why i have written here minus and uh, according to newton's second law we know that force is nothing but mass into acceleration which is given by acceleration is given by second order derivative of displacement with respect to time t that is what we know since by second law of motion by second law of motion f is equal to m into second order derivative of x with respect to t right so here from here we're gonna get a differential equation so here it gonna be plus k by m x is equal to zero so we have divided each and every term by m right so now this is suppose equation number one okay this is suppose equation number one so this equation represents the uh, you know periodic motion of angular frequency omega and here here k is nothing but let me write in k is nothing but omega uh, sorry m omega is equal m omega is equal right m omega is equal so here omega is omega is equal to angular frequency right and uh, i hope the uh, i hope you know the potential energy of simple harmonic oscillator potential energy of simple harmonic oscillator is given by v is equal to half k x square half k x square so as k is m omega square so we can write it as half m omega square x square that's what we can write okay so now let it be equation number suppose two this is equation number two now the one dimensional schrodinger equation time independent schrodinger equation is given by so one dimensional time independent schrodinger equation is partial second order partial derivative of phi sorry psi with respect to x plus 
2m by h cut square E which represents total energy minus potential energy again psi psi is the wave function is equal to zero that's what we get now you see here we're going to replace this v by this value of v in that what we have got in equation number two okay so let us use equation number two in this equation if you replace this v by this value uh, half m omega a square x square then what we're gonna get now let me go to the next next slide new slide let me take a new slide so here just wait so so here this v here you can see this v we're gonna replace this v by this value uh, so let us replace this v by Value. just wait then this equation becomes of this form right so from where we have put this value from equation number two from equation number two right or you can write using equation number two not a that's what we can write okay so if you differentiate it again with respect to a second order derivative of psi with respect to a so this can be written in this way del del x of del psi by del x right so now what we can do here uh, so let me write this one here just wait so on the right hand side if you make it del by del q then what you will get then here you're gonna have del q by del x right okay so as we have made it del by del q right so here we have del q by del x that's what we we're gonna have so in this case what you can do here if you replace this value and uh, this one can be replaced by a right so then what you're gonna have then you're gonna have this del del q of del psi by del q into a then again this is replaced by a that is what you're gonna have right so now if you simplify this then you will have del sorry so let me copy this step and let me go to a new let me take a new slide just bit here you can see so second order derivative of psi with respect to x this is becomes equals to uh, second order derivative of psi with respect to q this part and uh, a into a that's going to be a square that's what we can have okay so now let us use this result and uh, this result as well del psi by del x and this one as well in equation number three okay in equation number three so then here you see this part here this part gonna be replaced by a square because a is equal to this one okay a square then a square a a square x square will be replaced by q square right so hope you have understood this so here you see let me write here since this equation can be written as uh, second order derivative of psi with respect to x plus 2me by a squared square minus a square x square psi is equal to 0 because a square is equal to because the value of a is this one so we have replaced this part by a square right so now here you see this part of this equation will be replaced by this result okay then 
here and uh, and what we're gonna do here and this part will be replaced by q square okay q square because q is equal to ax right and doing so what we're gonna get so therefore the equation 3 becomes of this form okay so now here you can see if you divide both side by a square if you divide both side by a square okay then uh, what you gonna have so here this equation will be of this form now this a square cancels here we're gonna get a square right so when this equation is divided by a square then this is a square gonna be cancelled right so here this equation takes of this form and uh, here zero and we can take uh, we can take this is equal to lambda okay let us take this is equal to lambda so then this equation will be of this form that uh, second order derivative of psi with respect to q then plus 2 goes to it uh, instead of this we're gonna write lambda lambda minus q square psi is equal to 0 where this is equation number 4 where lambda is equal to lambda is equal to 2 m e a square h cut that's what we have got right so this is the value of lambda in case uh, in case in case of uh, you know if q square is very very greater than lambda uh, in that case this equation 4 becomes this equation number 4 becomes uh, this minus q square so we can ignore the lambda is equal to 0 and the solution of this kind of equation this is suppose equation number 5 okay this is suppose equation number 5 and uh, yeah so let me write this equation here this bit okay so if in case uh, q square is very very greater than lambda then we're gonna get this equation number 5 so now solution of equation number 5 uh, can be taken is phi is equal to uh, sorry not phi psi is equal to e to the power plus minus q square by 2 and this is correct or not it can be verified uh, it can be verified let me show you how if you differentiate this if you differentiate this with respect to q then what you're gonna have then you're gonna have well plus minus plus minus 1 by 2 e to the power plus minus q square by 2 again it is function of function if you differentiate q square then you're gonna get twice q so it is two these two cancels so it's gonna give you plus minus q into e to the power plus minus q square by 2 that's what you're gonna have right so now you see if you differentiate it again if you find the second order derivative if you find the second order derivative of psi with respect to q in the in that case you have to consider this one as u this one as v that means we're going to use the product rule okay then uh, first function derivative of second function then second function derivative of first function and so on so if we use that then this result will be of this form if you differentiate it again then you're going to get this result so i know i hope you know differentiation very well being a student of uh, bsc or msc level so that's why i'm not explaining it's an every time okay so that is what so just uh, remember i have used here product rule okay u dot v so uh, yeah, just let me tell you okay so now you see here uh, in this case uh, uh, here you can see if you consider q as a first function then uh, this one is second function if you apply this u dot u into v root then first function derivative of second function plus second function derivative of first function then in that case so here first function is q and if you differentiate the second function here if you differentiate the second function that means if you differentiate 
this one this is the second function here you see then you should get first function q into derivative of this second function sorry here derivative of this second function that is again you're gonna get uh, you know derivative of uh, derivative of this we have already got this this result right again you're gonna get q e to the power plus minus square by 2 there was plus minus here you're gonna get again plus minus so minus minus will be uh, here cancelled minus minus can be cancelled here okay so now the here you can uh, what you gonna get and this is the first sum the, that can be written in this way so q into q q square then again uh, once you have done first function derivative of second function then next time you need to do is second function derivative of first function that is second function is this one that uh, e to the power plus minus q square by 2 and derivative of the first function is yeah, derivative of q the first function is q derivative of first q is with uh, with respect to q it's going to be equal to 1 so we have got this result so hope you have understood this so now you see so now if you simplify this then what are you going to get here you can see if you simplify this if you take this part common then you're going to get second order derivative of psi with respect to q that's going to be equal to q square plus minus 1 e to the power plus minus q square by 2 that's what we're gonna have now for q square very very greater than 1 uh, so this q square plus minus 1 is almost equal to uh, approximately equal to q that's why this result can be written in this form let me go to the next slide okay so this is what we have got here this term e to the power plus minus q square by 2 can be replaced by psi uh, because we have considered that uh, psi is equal to you know here you see where is that solution okay this one as we have considered that psi is equal to this right so we can replace the psi here we can replace this value by psi okay so then what we're gonna get here just wait so if we replace this by psi then this equation becomes of this form which is nothing but which implies this q square psi is equal to zero which is exactly same as equation number five right so we get the same solution this is sorry we get the same equation this is the equation number five okay this is equation number five right so that's why we can say this solution is correct that we we can say this solution is uh, this is a solution of this equation number five that is verified okay so it is verified that psi is equal to this one is a solution of this equation number five is verified right that's how we can verify okay so now you see psi is equal to psi is equal to plus minus sorry not plus minus e to the power plus minus q square by 2 is a solution of equation number 5 that's what uh, it is verified now you see the quantity now this quantity represents this quantity represents the probability of finding a particle along x-axis is probability so let me write this way is equal to probability of finding a particle probability of finding a particle along x-axis along x-axis this is along okay so if that is the case then you see if you see the graph of uh, this probability dense then it gonna give you this one, right where this is uh, you know x is equal to plus infinity and here towards this side you're gonna have x is equal to minus infinity sorry x equal to minus infinity and uh, as x approaches to infinity q approaches to infinity okay 
in that case this psi square is uh, you know decreasing gradually it is decreasing gradually right but here you see if you take this solution the value of psi square will be increasing with the increasing value of q right with increasing value of q but you see if psi is equal to e to the power q square by 2 if you take the plus one plus q square by 2 so it gonna be increasing in that case psi square gonna be increasing with increasing value of q okay that's why this solution is not acceptable okay that's why this solution is not acceptable okay so wh what we can write here uh, here you can see that uh, the reason why this psi is equal to e to the power q square by 2 is not acceptable not acceptable as it increases with increases with increasing x that is with increasing q that means we know that we have considered q is equal to a x if x increases q definitely increases right so we can say but but here you see this solution satisfies this equation right so that's why it can be considered as you know uh, asymptotic solution so e to the power q square by 2 is as important solution right so now you see from this analysis it is clear that uh, the solution of uh, this equation solution of this equation must be a factor of uh, this term e to the power minus q square by 2 because this plus q square by 2 is not acceptable okay right so that's why what we can write therefore it is clear it is clear that the equation of no sorry clear that the solution solution of equation number so let me go back to this solution uh, sorry equation equation number four solution of equation number four must be a factor of factor of e to the power minus q square by 2 right so that's why let us consider so let us consider the solution phi is equal to e to the power minus q square by 2 into phi of q phi of q which is a function of q where phi of q is a function of function of q since q is a function of x that's why we can consider this also is a function of x right so hope you have understood this right so now if you differentiate it with respect to q then what you gonna have sorry first let's find del phi by del q del phi by del q then what you gonna have here uh, First, uh, uh, here you see we're going to consider this is product of two functions. Okay. So first function that is e to the power minus q square by two derivative of the second function that's uh, del psi by del q. Then plus 
second function that is psi then derivative of the first function here in this case derivative of the first function will be minus q square that is uh, here we should get uh, minus half e to the power minus q square by 2 then again if you differentiate this as it is function of function again you're gonna get 2q 2 2 will be cancelled so this is gonna be uh, this is gonna give you minus pi q into e to the power minus q square by 2 that's what we're gonna have right so now you see let's take common if you take this e to the power q square by 2 minus q square by 2 take common if you take this term common just wait then this results becomes this of this form just wait then you're gonna get this result right okay so if you differentiate it again if you differentiate it again if you find a second order derivative of psi with respect to q then what you're gonna have so in that case you consider this one as u this one as b then uh, applying the product rule then you're gonna get so this is the result we're gonna have if you differentiate it again now let's simplify this so this is what we have got second order derivative of psi with respect to q this is what we have got after simplification right now we have to substitute these values of psi and uh, this one okay so let me take this as equation number let me go back to the previous slide uh, this is equation number six this is six suppose and let me take this as seven using si using six and seven in equation number four so using six and seven in equation number four using six and seven in equation number four if we use these two results this one and this one this one it's a result in this equation equation number four here you see in this equation number four then what we're gonna get we are going to have this result that is equal to uh, e to the power minus q square by 2 so let me copy it from the previous slide just wait So this is what we have got okay so just I have written this one here so on the previous slide it was on this side okay nothing different okay so then plus then we had in equation number four you can see we have this one into psi and psi is replaced by now e to the power minus q square by 2 and then this equation becomes uh, you know e to the power minus q square by 2 into lambda minus q square 5 is equal to 0 that's what we have got right so hope you have understood this okay so <coughs> actually uh, here you see uh, this size replaced by this one into phi of q phi of q that means phi you can say and if you simplify this equation you're gonna get this right so now here you see we can consider so from here we're gonna use the uh, you know for venous method for power series solution so we can consider that uh, the psi sorry not psi phi so let us assume let us assume that the function phi of function of q uh, may be may be expressed expressed as a power series of q that is uh, in this way summation r to infinity a r q s plus r that's what let us consider this way so if that is the case if we differentiate it if we differentiate it differentiating uh, with respect to q 
with respect to q then uh, we're gonna have del phi by del q which is going to be equal to summation r a r if you define it with respect to q then here you're going to get s plus r minus 1 s plus r minus 1 and q to the power s plus r sorry here it should be s plus r s plus r then q to the power s plus r minus 1 that's what we're going to have now if you differentiate it again if you differentiate it again you're going to get uh, second order derivative of psi and that's going to be equal to let me go to the next slide okay so if you define it let me copy this if you define this psi again okay so let me uh, let's don't take this one okay here you see let me write this equation again the last step that we have got so if you differentiate it again differentiate it with respect to q again then you're gonna get second order derivative of phi with respect to q then it's gonna be equal to it's gonna be equal to summation r a r then s plus r into s plus r minus 1 into q to the power s plus r minus 2 now if we use this results this one and this one in this equation this is suppose equation number 8 right so this is suppose equation number 8 so using this result in 8 then uh, we're gonna get using using these results in 8 so what we're gonna have here this is gonna be equal to summation summation here you see this part is replaced by this result and this part is replaced by this result okay that's it so hope you have understood this so and doing so what we're gonna get summation from r to infinity a r s plus r into s plus r minus 1 q to the power s plus r minus 2 then minus 2 q summation r a r s plus r q to the power s plus r minus 1 then uh, plus lambda minus 1 and psi uh, sorry uh, yes uh, phi phi not psi phi we have considered summation r a r q to the power s plus r and this is the equation number 8 now equation becomes uh, this equation number 8 becomes of this form so here from this two term what we can take common here not this one this good uh, okay so what we can do here this q if you multiply this one with this one then it's gonna be q to the power s plus r right okay then we can take this one and this one common okay if you multiply this two then it gonna be equal to this right so in that case in that case this equation becomes of this form summation a r so let me copy this so this then minus here what is taken common summation r and uh, a r is also taken common then also what we have taken common r sorry not r s sorry q, q to the power s plus r so if you multiply this q with this one then its power become s plus r only right so hope you know these things very simple things right so now <coughs> here you see uh, what we're gonna do here then we didn't break it uh, it's uh, here we have got two s plus r 2 s plus r minus lambda minus 1 into only lambda minus 1 which is equal to 0 that's what we have got now let me copy this result and let me go to the next slide okay let me copy this last last step and let me go to the next slide 
so here is the last step that we have got and uh, now so here you see the uh, let us uh, equate the coefficient of s to the uh, q to the power minus 2 is equal to 0 equating the coefficient of equating the coefficient of the lowest possible power of this q that uh, that you're gonna get uh, the term containing q to the power s minus 2 which is will be possible when uh, r is equal to 0 when r is equal to 0 so if you put r is equal to 0 here then this equation becomes uh, uh, then the coefficient will be a naught s into s minus 1 so r is 0 now okay so then q to the power so we have taken the coefficient on it equating the coefficient is equal to 0 that is equal to 0 which implies that either a naught is equal to 0 or s is equal to 0 or s minus 1 is equal to 0 which is equal this s will be equal to 1 here and uh, but but a naught is not equal to 0 so we can have only s is equal to 0 and uh, s is equal to 1 so now equating the equating to the 0 uh, equating the coefficient of uh, now equating the coefficient of just wait let me copy this line so now equating the coefficient of q to the power s minus 1 to 0 okay to 0 so i forgot to write here to 0 then what we can have we can have s1 sorry a1 s1 plus uh, s plus 1 into s is equal to 0 if you uh, if you want to get uh, you know q to the power s minus 1 then here you need to put so you need to put r is equal to 1 in order to get s minus 1 so a q to the power s minus 1 so that's why here r is equal to what we have put 1 so that's why we have got this then from here what we're gonna get here we're gonna get a is equal to 0 or s is equal to 0 or s plus 1 is equal to 0 which implies s is equal to minus 1 but it is not possible s cannot be negative okay s cannot cannot be negative so here possible values are these two okay so now here you see if you take the coefficient of uh, you know q to the power s plus r if you take that coefficient then you need to put r is equal to r plus uh, 2 then you're gonna get q to the power s plus r right so hope you have understood this now equating the coefficient sorry now equating the coefficient of uh, q to the power s plus r s plus r to 0 then we need to put r is equal to so we need to replace r by r is replaced by r plus 2 okay then what we're gonna get let me copy this line and let me go to the next slide okay So here you see in this case in this case if you want to get the coefficient of this and then you have to take the coefficient of this from here and there also because here also we have got q to the power r uh, s to the uh, sorry q to the power s plus r but when you have taken r is equal to 1 r is equal to 0 uh, when you want to get the coefficient of q to the power 
s minus 1 which is not possible to get from here because if you want to get uh, s minus 1 power s minus 1 then r should be equal to minus 1 but here r cannot be negative okay so remember that that's why we are taking the coefficient from this one only so now now you see if you want to get the coefficient of q to the power s plus r then what you need to do here is just you need to replace this r by r plus 2 then this plus 2 minus 2 will be cancelled okay in the first term okay in the first term in the first summation okay so because you see now you see this is a summation right a sum of a series of uh, terms so that's why uh, in order to get the coefficient you have to first put r then whatever the remaining terms you have then next will be a r minus 1 then so on then next one will be a r minus 2 and then in this term here you're gonna get q to the power s plus r minus uh, sorry r plus 2 minus 2 that's how you're gonna get right sorry so if this is r it should be r plus 1 then next one should be r plus 2 and so on right so hope you have understood this so then you're gonna get the coefficient if you replace the r by r plus 2 okay uh, then you're gonna get the coefficient of uh, q to the power s plus r right so now you see uh, equating the coefficient of this to 0 and, uh, it, uh, here you see we have to replace the, the r r by r plus 2 in the first summation in the first summation okay in the first first summation okay so if you want to uh, if you want to learn uh, forbidden method how to f obtain the power series power series solution of uh, using forbidden uh, method then uh, just hit the link uh, given in the uh, you know i button that uh, i have uh, attached a link of a playlist where i have taught uh, for venus method how to obtain the power series solution using for venus method okay so here and uh, here you see the reason behind the a not cannot be equal to zero and a1 can be zero it is possible a1 can be zero okay so those things i have already explained in the details in those videos okay so here you see if we choose a1 is equal to zero a1 is equal to zero then we're gonna get a3 a5 a7 these are also equal to zero okay remember that and uh, in that case and uh, and one more thing let me tell you so here you see that i have already told you this is the uh, coefficient of this this is the lowest power in this series if this is the lowest power that means this uh, the term containing this uh, q to q to the power s minus 2 must exist in this series if it must exist then a cannot be a not cannot be zero otherwise this term will be zero right so now here you see here what we have got if we equate uh, this with uh, zero then we can write we can write the coefficient of s plus r after replacing r by r plus 2 from the first summation here this r gonna be r plus 2 right and this r gonna be sorry this r gonna be r plus 2 a r plus 2 here we're gonna write a r plus 2 and this term gonna be s plus r plus 2 and this term is gonna be if you put here r plus 2 then it gonna be s plus r plus 1 that's what we're gonna have okay so now and from here we're gonna get our ar into this thing okay that's what we're gonna have right so here let me write the coefficient ar plus 2 s plus r plus 2 then s plus r minus 1 
sorry it should be plus one okay it should be plus one and uh, uh, yeah okay minus a r 2 into s plus r minus lambda minus 1 is equal to 0 and this is going to give you a r plus 2 is equal to 2 s plus 2 r plus 1 minus lambda divided by s plus r plus 2 into s plus r plus 1 into a r right that's what we're gonna have okay so now you see so from here if you find a r plus 2 by a r then this is gonna be equal to this right just wait so this is what we have got now uh, let me replace this r by n okay uh, why i have replaced this one uh, by n i will explain it later okay so now here you see let me copy this uh, just wait just wait so what we're gonna have if we replace the r by n then we're gonna get a n plus 2 by a n this is suppose equation number uh, what was the last number equation number so let it be equation number 9 okay so from 9 from 9 what we're going to have if we replace r by n okay replacing r by n what we're going to get 2s plus 2n plus 1 by sorry here lambda s plus n plus 2 into s plus n minus sorry plus 1 this is what we're going to have now if we take limit if we take limit let me copy this and let me go to a new slide okay let me copy these things and let me go to a new slide so here is the these are the steps we have got so limit n tends to infinity if you take limit n tends to infinity a n plus 2 by a n if this n tends to infinity that means n is very very greater than s right you can say consider you can consider it that way s n s plus 2 so in that case in that case we can write that uh, here we can ignore other terms okay we can simply write twice n by n from here we can write n and from here also we can write n that is n into n n square and that's going to be 2 by n okay that's going to be 2 by n and one more thing that now again again we assume the solution phi is equal to plus minus uh, e to the power plus minus q square by 2 we have cons uh, we have uh, already verified this is the solution of the equation number so what was the equation solution of equation number 5 this was the equation okay so we have already cons uh, verified that its solution is this and also one more thing we already have. discussed that e to the power plus q square by 2 is not acceptable is not acceptable right we have already explained we have already discussed about that not acceptable right so now if you expand it uh, if you expand this this is going to be equal to 1 plus q square plus q to the power 4 by 2 factorial plus dot 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 then q to the power n so here we are taking n so i have replaced the r by r by n here okay so because we are going to compare this expression we're going to compare this expression with this series that's why i have uh, replace the r by n okay that's it not, nothing different uh, nothing new about that 
so half factorial n because here you see why half factorial n when the power is 4 here we have 2 2 is half of 4 so that's why when the power is n so here we should get half of n factorial right so similarly plus next i'm going to be uh, next i'm going to be q to the power n plus 2 and that's going to be half n plus 1 factorial and plus that that's that, so on right that's how we can write now let me write the remaining part on this side here you see so let us write e to the q square by 2 so here what we have done here so here we have applied this result e to the by x is equal to 1 plus uh, x by 1 factorial 1 factorial is 1 plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on okay so here x is nothing but x square by 2 okay that is what we have applied here okay so now you see what we are going to do in this case here uh, we need to modify this series in this way e to the power q square by 2 is equal to 1 plus b2 q square and there is q square i have written b2 and uh, b2 means is nothing but 1 by factorial 1 right factorial 1 is 1 and let me write 1 by factorial 2 is suppose b3 let me write b3 q to the power 4 sorry no, uh, instead of b3 let me write b4 then q to the power 4 and similarly let us consider 1 by half n factorial this part 1 by this is suppose bn let me take this one as bn dot 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 plus bn q to the power n then next term obviously bn plus 2 q to the power n plus 2 that's what we can have right so from here you see what we can do if you uh, if you find that uh, b n plus 2 by b n then what you gonna get here so b n, n plus 2 is nothing but 1 by uh, 1 by half n plus 1 factorial and on the other hand so b n b n is nothing but half sorry 1 by 1 by half n factorial right so instead of 1 by this one we have written b n right so that's what we're gonna get so this implies this implies half n factorial by half n plus 1 factorial so it gonna be 1 by half n plus 1 right if you expand the factorial this one will be cancelled right so that's what we're gonna have and if you take the limit again okay uh, this is what b n plus 1 sorry not 1 2 b n plus 2 by b n if you take the limit again let me go to new slide If you take the limit that uh, n tends to infinity okay n tends to infinity then in that case here what we can before that we can what we can do we can multiply 2 and 2 here okay in in that case this terms uh, this term gonna be of this form okay 2 by n plus 2 and as n tends to infinity mean n is very very greater than 2 so in that case we can write n plus 2 is approximately equal to n right we can write that way and its value becomes 2 by n right so here we have also obtained that value of this limit n tends to infinity a n plus 2 by a n right we have got this value these two values are same right so 
and we have obtained from this e to the power q square by 2 which was not acceptable so that's why here you see that's why uh, this term should not exist uh, this sum this term should be equal to 0 that a n plus uh, here instead of n uh, we have obtained this one from this expression actually right we have obtained this one from this expression equation number 9 so here uh, else from here uh, we have already shown that its value its value becomes n by 2 sorry 2 by n which is equal to the value uh, of this which is obtained from this result which was not acceptable so that's why that's why to obtain a satisfactory you know uh, wave function therefore to obtain to obtain to obtain a satisfactory wave function wave function the series power series solution okay and the wave function the power series the power series that means which series this one so let me show you this one this series just wait this series i'm talking about this series let it be one in uh, let me write this one in roman number or let me write the this one as small a series a okay so this series series a okay this series a uh, must be must be break of two must be break of two finite number of terms terms so that means after r term after r plus t r t is after r term after r term so this must be zero a plus a r plus two this must be equal to zero because you know as we have got the value of this one is n by two which is equal to the value of this one which is obtained from this result e to the power q square by two which is not acceptable so from a so uh, the so that's why it's corresponding term a r plus 2 that must be equal to 0 right okay so now you see if that is the case then if you see this equation this uh, let me take this is as, as equation number 10 okay let me take this as equation number 10 so from 10 what we're gonna have we're gonna have 2s plus 2r plus 1 minus lambda by so whatever be the denominator here if it is equal to 0 if you multiply this denominator with 0 that's going to be equal to 0 so let's uh, don't write this one so i'm not writing this one okay so directly we can write the numerator is equal to 0 from equation number 10 okay so that's what we can have so from here we're gonna get lambda is equal to if you transfer the lambda on the other side it's gonna be positive then here we have got 2s plus 2r sorry 2r plus 1 that's what we we get yeah so now let me copy this and let me go to a new slide so here is the result we have got now lambda is equal to this one so 4 4 s is equal to 0 1 2 dot 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 so on this lambda will be equal to if for s is equal to 0 that's going to be 2 r plus 1 right and uh, for s is equal to 1 if you put here 1 then it's going to be 
twice r, r plus 3 and if you put uh, s is equal to 2 then it gonna be 2 r plus 5 dot 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 these are odd numbers okay right so we can write them in this form because they are odd number so we can write 2 n plus 1 for n is equal to 0 1 2 n 3 right so odd number now odd numbers can be written in this form this is the general form right we have to lambda and we have already got that value of lambda is equal to so let me go back to the previous slides let me check one by one you see in this slide we have already got the, uh, we have already taken that uh, lambda is equal to this one so let me copy this okay so now let me go to the last slide so here you see so we have got that we have taken that lambda is equal to this one right so now replace the lambda by this value that is 2 m e by a square a squared is equal to 2 n plus 1 now also that we also have considered that a is equal to a is equal to m omega h cut if you have noted all these things if you check the note completely from the beginning then you can you will get that value of a we have taken this one right so that's why if you put this value here 2 m e by instead of a if we put m omega by a cut into a here it's supposed to be a a c square a is cut is square okay so that should be a cut is square i missed the a cut is square here so i missed the a cut is square here also there should be a square okay so now you see now what we have got this a a cut cancels a c square right and here we have 2 n plus 1 so it can uh, imply here e is equal to 2 n plus 1 here m m also cancels right a cut omega by 2 that's what we can have right where n is equal to 0 1 2 3 dot 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 so on so that is what we have got so here you see this is the energy eigenvalue of this oscillator right so here is the energy eigenvalue so equation number 11 equation 11 the values of uh, so here you see so what we can write the value of energy given by equation number 11 right known as uh, known as energy eigenvalue energy eigen value right so hope you have understood this so thank you for watching see you in the next video